I'm super excited that you have joined me here today for us to create a beautiful, stunning wood panel feature wall. This is not just like any other timber feature wall. This is going to be super easy because these panels are pre-cut, ready for us to install, spaced out, so we don't have to worry about doing all of the hard work. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jade, and I am here to teach you everything about DIY home improvement and flipping furniture. This one is such a fun one and I can't wait to get into it. Let's go. All right, let's have a bit of a brief look at the tools that we're going to need to complete this project before we get started. You're only going to need a few tools. You're not going to need a lot of tools in your tool belt to get this job done. The hardest part is going to be cutting out where the power points and outlets go. But let's have a look at what we're going to need. You're going to need a level. The level is going to be used just for the first panel so that you can line that up and get that level. And therefore, every other panel that follows that is also going to be level. You're going to need some screws. I like to use the same color that the backing is on these panels. So my panels that I'm installing have a black backing, therefore I'm using black screws. You can also get these panels with a gray backing. Just make sure that whatever the backing is, you're going to match the screws to the backing. You're going to need a drill because there is a lot of screws to install and it is going to be a very slow process with the screwdriver. Doable, but very slow and tedious. So you could either use an impact drill if you've got one. This is what I am going to be using for the project. Uh, or otherwise, you can use a little battery-operated drill that you can easily pick up at the hardware store pretty cheap. So you can get one of these little battery drills. And then you're going to need something to cut your panels. So I'm going to be using this multi-tool today. However, if you've got a jigsaw, you could also use a jigsaw just to cut out those panels. Let's get stuck into our transformation now. There are so many different ways that you can create a wooden feature wall in your home. This is just one way, and this way is a really easy way. Here I'm just opening up all of the pre-cut timber panels that I have purchased from the Wood Veneer Hub. These are linked down in the description. There's a few main benefits to using these panels compared to just getting timber from the hardware store and using that to create the wood panel effect. These panels have an acoustic felt backing, which is perfect for sound absorption. They can be used in rooms where you're wanting to try and contain the sound, but the design of the panels with the felt backing is also really great for temperature control. But by far my favorite feature is how easy they are to install. I installed this entire wall in less than two hours. I simply laid out my first panel and grabbed out the level to make sure that it was level and then I was able to start installing the panel with these screws. These are just black screws that I'm going through the felt backing into the plaster wall. If you don't want to install the panels with the screws, you can also apply a glue to the back of the panel and glue them onto the wall. It's just going to be a little bit more sturdy if you do use the screws or even use a combination of glue with a few screws. As you can see by now, the process is really quite easy. I'm just picking up each panel and then applying six screws in each panel to hold this onto the wall. I was really lucky in that I didn't need to cut the panels down to size, but if you have a ceiling height where you need to trim the bottom of the panels, you're going to need to use a jigsaw to cut the panels down before you start installing them. If you don't have access to a jigsaw, this can be done with a handsaw as well.
So when you come up to having your panel that you need to cut, if you've got any PowerPoints, you're going to need to cut the PowerPoint out of the panel. Now, what you're going to do is get your measurements and then you're gonna mark your measurements onto the panel. And I'm going to use a multi-tool or you could use a jigsaw to then cut out that square that you need to be able to put your PowerPoint in so that the panel just slots nicely over that PowerPoint. So you're gonna take your measurements. What I've done here is I've taken my measurements from the, the outside of mine. Basically, I'm lining my panel up here and then I'm going to take my measurements from the outside of my PowerPoint, from the inside of my PowerPoint, up to the bottom of my PowerPoint and up to the top of my PowerPoint. And so I've got my measurements here. You'll see that I'm going to measure from the outside of my panel, 140 mil across. And then this measurement to this side is 260 mil. Then I'm gonna go up 168 and up 250 until I get my little square. And then once I've drawn on that square onto my next panel, I can then cut that out so that my panel will slot on nicely. Once you've got your measurements, you're going to take your panel and put your measurements onto your panel. What you're going to need to do is measure all of the four marks and then rule them out so you're going to create a square on your panel. I've taken the case off the wall so that I can then use that to mark out where I'm going to have my PowerPoint and make sure I'm cutting a big enough space so that I have enough room and I'm not going to cut my spot and then find out that it still doesn't actually fit. You're going to take your tape measure, marking from the solid edge, which is where we marked from up against the wall. And I'm going to mark out those corner points. I'm going to align my tape measure up with the side. And the first measurement I'm going to make is this 260 measurement up here across to the side. You're going to then come across here, mark out your 260 point and just put a little line there. You're then going to take your inside measurement, which is the 140 measurement. You're going to mark across to 140 and then just put a little line there. Turn your tape measure around the opposite direction and you're going to mark up the opposite way. So my inner measurement is 16.8. So I'm going to find my other measurements and then I'm going to go up against that. So 168 mil just here. And then I'm going to find my top measurements which is 250. So I'm going to find my 250 mark and mark that bounce. You then have the point where those two marks meet and you can create a little L at each of those marks. I'm going to do the same on the opposite corners. So we're going to go up to 250. the bottom measurement is 168 making sure that my measurement from this direction is correct as well once I've got my four little L marks I'm then going to take a ruler and rule between each of them a nice solid line that I know where I'm going to be cutting This is gonna be the hardest part of the installation process, cutting out your PowerPoints. Thankfully, the wall that I am installing this on does only have the one outlet. If you've got a wall that's got multiple outlets, you're gonna to have to repeat this process a couple of times. So there you've got your outlet and you've got plenty of space. I've got a little bit of distance around it. When we did the measurements on the wall, I added a couple of mil because I wanna just make sure that it's got plenty of space and that it's not too tight in there where I've cut that out. So now I've got that measurement there and I am ready to cut. Because I'm going to be using the multi-tool to cut out this square, it's actually easier for me to drill the corners and then I have a gap where I can insert the multi-tool into the slot that little bit easier, just to get a little bit of a nicer cut. Drilling the holes on the corner is also going to work better if you're using a jigsaw so that you've got a place where you can insert the blade from the jigsaw. And once again, if you don't have any tools, a jigsaw or a multi-tool, you could do this with a little handsaw. It's just gonna take longer. 
Once I had this cut down to size, I just then installed the last couple of panels onto the wall and I was done. Here it is, the end result. I absolutely love how this feature wall and these wood panels have transformed the look and feel of this room. I've also done a little bit of updating with the home decor elements, but if you're wanting to have a go for yourself, these amazing timber panels are linked down in the description. And remember, if you love a good home DIY, make sure you hit the subscribe button. See you next time.